I would like to focus on one sentence there or a phrase which I think will bind up all that the Lord is telling us. Be constant in prayer. What's the meaning of being constant in prayer? This is something that I was also touched many, many, many years ago. So, constant in prayer. So, say the Our Father, the Hail Marys, or say prayers constantly. That was what we understand as praying constantly. But prayer, what is it actually? Prayer is a relationship with God who is relating to us all the time. It is in Him we live, move and have our being. Like we are not conscious of the air that we breathe, but we are doing this constantly. And so we are sustained by, our, by the breath, breathing all the time. So also we need sunlight, and sunlight is given to us in that measure. Some of us may not be uh, exposing ourselves to the sunlight, and if we don't do that, then we will be sick, and you'll be going to doctors and not getting cured. But what you need is sunlight. So we need constant light, constant air. If you don't breathe, you'll be dead. So in that same way, we need constantly to be aware of God in us. Because otherwise what happens to us, we think we are, the, we are the important one. We become God. And we also tell God what he should do to us. Rather than being humble and saying, okay, what is it that you want? St. Francis Xavier had a similar experience. He was doing a lot of things after his conversion for Jesus. Working till he almost died. Then Ignatius told him, not what you do, but what God wants you to do. And that is why when he was asked by Ignatius, because there was another Jesuit who was supposed to come to the east, Ribadanera, he got sick. So when St. Ignatius went to St. Francis Xavier and told him, see, there's no one now to go to the east. He says, I'll go. Why? Because in this he realized the will of God. What was he happy about? He was very happy to be with Ignatius and learn more things about the spiritual life. Wanted to converse with him. He was his secretary and he was doing a great job. He liked that very much. But then he realized God's will was here. It's tough. It's difficult because you have to die to yourself. And so you must not remain self-centered, but God-centered. And if you want to be God-centered, and if you want to constantly pray, you must be humble. Humble is to realize that you don't have your ego there. And what do you realize when you don't have the ego? You realize what Jesus, what uh, St. Paul has said, that we are all members of the same body of Jesus. And then when we have this awareness because of prayer, we will reach out to one another as members of the same body. Then there will be no distinctions that we will make. You are this, you are that. No, we are part of the same body, but different parts that have different functions. And we all have to do that. So we become supportive, we become very much attuned to one another as part of the same body. So the way we look at things becomes totally different. And God, God is constantly supplying us with what we need. He's providing us. But what happens to us? We are worried about what we have to do, this, that. But if we have him, we will do all those other things as well. And do them really well. So let our focus be in being aware that God is with us, that God loves us, and that we must respond in that love of God. There are many saints that have done that and let us ask their help too. So at this moment, what shall we do? What I've been telling you to practice. Practice being present to God at every breath. And you will not regret it because 
all the time we are breathing and all the time God is with us and all the time we can allow God to work in us. But if you don't practice, you will not be able to do it. None of us, if we have been working in the kitchen, will improve unless you keep doing the things constantly. Someone who has not gone to the kitchen might not even know how to make a tea. We all worried about it. So once you do it, it comes natural. So also once you are present to God and learn the art of doing it, then it will become very easy for God to work through you. You cooperate with God and it's a wonderful life. Let's try it. Hold your hands like this. Keep them in your lap. Keep your back straight. Close your eyes. Just be present to the breath that fills you, like the dish that is poured with water. It fills from down up. So also, when we breathe, we are filled from our toes right up to our head with breath, with Jesus, because Jesus is life in the breath. And we experience him in our body, mind and spirit. We are not present for, to all these parts very often because we live only in our thoughts or in our feelings. We are fighting somewhere else, some, something that has gone wrong. Today's quote will tell us, don't regret your bad habits, but replace them with good ones. So let us replace what we have not been doing in the past with what we can do now in the present. Be present to him who is present to us, whose body, whose members we all are.